Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Let's talk about what we're seeing on the markets today and yesterday. NASDAQ was down 1% yesterday in a holiday shortened week. The SP 500 down one third of a percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down one tenth of a percent. 10 year Treasury sits at 3.8%. Bitcoin cracked 15,768. So it's playing in that lower new, new lows for the multi years. Disney was up 6.3%. Again, I hate saying this a couple weeks ago. I was like, Bob Chapek has to go. Wall Street does not like what he's doing. And Bob Iger said, I'll never be CEO again of Disney. Well, he's CEO again of Disney. I guess you can't take him for his word, huh? Stock slumped yesterday after China made it clear that its era of strict COVID restrictions not over. Plus rumors about a potential OPEC oil production increase battered energy stocks and crude prices. Disney was a winner. Success or failure starts at the top. Chapek, I don't think he did anything inherently wrong. He came in right on the pandemic when parks and movie theaters were shut down. I think he handled Ron DeSantis and the phrase don't say gay incorrectly, or at least by Wall Street standards of incorrectly. <clears throat> and I think that's what we got. So uh, plus streaming is very, very expensive to make good content. Soon you'll be able to find and buy weed in New York. Most New Yorkers know you can buy, already buy marijuana on practically every city block. But the state which legalized recreational cannabis back in March of 2021 awarded its first 36 licenses yesterday. It took a long time. Turkeys. I don't understand the tradition of a president having a press release where he pardons a turkey. And... He said he's grateful for no ballot stuffing. Stuff and get it. There's no why. No. The two turkeys, particularly weird large birds named Chocolate and Chip, got a reprieve yesterday. Of note, this was started in 1963. Where some people think. Um, well, it started back in 1947, but the pardoning of the turkeys became a thing. Because they used to be eaten. I, I don't even think it's cute. It's just one of those things I think looks silly. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Um, a rail strike. A rail strike could be coming just in time for the holidays. The nation's largest rail union yesterday narrowly voted down a tentative labor contract brokered by the Biden administration increasing the risks for the United States to have another debilitating strike. The Obviously, I'm thinking about the longshoremen, the people who unload boats. Strike could happen as soon as December 5, unless a new agreement is reached or Congress steps in with prevention measures. I'm not going to get into what they want. I just don't think it's great content. Um, interesting yesterday at the World Cup and this morning, Argentina lost to Saudi Arabia. What an upset. No way. And then, which I didn't see this one coming, Iran players joined the protest. They didn't sing their own country's national anthem. Basically, you know, striking with the young people and the women in Iran who are demonstrating the response to the death of a young woman in police custody. Interesting. There's a couple of governments in the world you don't want to like try to make look bad, and Iran and China or South Korea, North Korea are two, three of them, right? We'll see how that goes. Um, hmm. What are the big stories at this point in time? Let's go through a couple of them. Again, Bob Iger, I think, is creating a very interesting Thanksgiving for Disney shareholders. Iger's good. He's the guy who brought in Marvel. He's the guy who brought in Pixar. He's the guy who brought in Lucas. Okay. Even Google parent Alphabet isn't immune to pressure campaigns. A major investor in the search giant is demanding CEO Sundar Pichai greatly slash headcount to improve operating efficiency. It is called for an aggressive buyback campaign. Interesting, right? 
are you picking up what I'm finding interesting there? Um, activists are saying, hey, you need to fire people. This company needs to be more slim. It always feels weird when we, when we say fire, fire, fire. Biggest cost of doing business is people. Wharton professor Jeremy Siegel forecasted the stocks can surge 20% next year. That's optimistic. The Fed's going to acknowledge falling inflation soon, and that will leave the stocks poised for a spike. I think finally the Fed will say, you know what, on the ground of things, most are declining, and we got to be thinking good about that. Europe is loading up on Russian diesel before an import ban kicks in on refined fuels. Some parts of Europe have cut 90% of Russian oil. And going into the cold months of winter, they're going to cut off the last 10% very soon. Putin's army is running low on munitions. This toll in this fight is just crazy. Humans and munitions and land and property. I would say uh, both sides are losing pretty big on things that matter. Is there is there any more Twitter stories that we have to report? <laughs> Twitter and Matt, Meta staff are flocking to vent on blind. Some Meta staff have taken the platform to share the company's chief technology officer is deterring employees from writing about the company on the site. Everything you'll want to know about the anonymous workplace forum. Um, blind. I don't know how I feel about anonymous that's given the problem with twitter it's a problem with the internet right unless you have that blue check mark you tend to say whatever you want to whomever you want i don't know i've i've always behaved i think in social media i throw in that thing because now i'm starting to think about it um hmm a leaked email shows Twitter employees must send Elon Musk weekly updates of everything they've worked on, especially if it's going to help innovate rapidly. In other Musk news, the billionaire told Twitter employees that he's done with layoffs for now and that he tweeted Monday that Twitter Blue relaunches on hold. It's, it's not going great at Twitter. The world's richest man, Elon Musk, his wealth has taken over a hundred billion dollar hit. That's a very, very large number. Musk holds a 15% stake in Tesla and the decline in the electric vehicle maker's price shaved around $8.6 billion off Musk's wealth in just one day. His wealth peaked at $340 billion. It's now at its lowest point in a while at $170 billion. If you do the math, he's lost half of $340 billion. One minute. Still, would I take it? I would. Um, runner up on the second richest person in the world, um, the chairman of Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. His net worth beat him by about 13 billion. So it's getting close. And if you ever take a look at Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, it's a lot of luxury brands that do well in good economies and bad economies. I like LVMH for a long term patient investor. If you believe that rich people are always going to be rich and rich people are always going to want to express their richness by buying things like $10,000 bottles of vodka. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, tw Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing and more. Thanks for listening to the show. Taking a look at today's market, it is a holiday shortened week, which to me tends to be positive as a lot of the professionals have gone home or gone on vacation. So <laughs> stock market's going to show that the basis for a positive disposition is up for debate right now. The SP 500 moving a little bit higher. There's still growth worries tied towards COVID. There's still ECB member. Uh, one of the ECB members made the case for a 75 base point hike. So countries around the world, governments around the world are raising interest rates, uh, which curbs growth, makes getting a mortgage tougher or not getting a mortgage, makes a mortgage payment tougher. It makes borrowing money tougher from a credit card company, uh, borrowing money from a government. Um, that's one thing that we have to talk about is 
how much can the U.S. government afford to see the cost of borrowing rise? Because we're a nation that borrows money to fund our day to day, year to year obligations. Joining me now, Tony Mendez with BayAreaLoanSource.com. He has a show on the station. He'll tell you a little bit about that in just a second. But Tony, low down payment programs. Being a mortgage lender, I would imagine your world is a little bit, how shall we say, different than it was a year ago. But what do we need to know about low down payment programs? Uh, good morning. Uh, low down payment programs for I want to go back several years, just weren't working for a lot of people. When we talk about low down payment, we're talking about 3% down or 5% down because in many cases, the homes were going over asking price, which meant they were also going over market value and appraised value. So that down payment, whether it's 3 or 5%, was going to the seller instead of to the loan. So they were just, people were just getting um, outbid by people with a lot more down payment. So now that home prices are coming back to market value, and I'm not making any predictions on which direction they're going. They're just back to market value. These pro- products, 3% down, 5% down, even some of the products that offer uh, um, you know, the community seconds that help people with that, you know, the, to finish that 3%, to make it 100% financing, those products are now practical for buyers to use in this kind of market. What do we need to know? Who qualifies for low-down uh, payment programs? Well, anyone can qualify for a low-down payment product. Uh, the first-time home buyers are really the ones that we, we like paying attention to because we, we like bringing more people to, to the market. We, we, of course, need more inventory. But first-time home buyers can take advantage of any of these products as long as it's owner-occupied. They can use these um, some of the advantages with interest rate as well as uh, down payment. And then some of the, like Cal Hapa, for example, it's a program that California has for um, first-time home buyers, and they can go up to, uh, to 100% financing if they qualify with their income limits. And that's the thing about a lot of these programs is they have income caps. Um, Cal Hafa has a really aggressive one, but still you ha- you can't make over that certain amount. So it's it's worth looking into not just these you know nationally and local products, but even in your own communities. There's something called community seconds that you could qualify to help you with down payment. First time home buyers only. You know a lot of product. I'm impressed. Um, Tony Mendez hosted the Real Estate Report Wednesdays from 2 to 3 p.m. It's also got to replay Thursdays at 6 p.m. And sometimes you can find it on the weekend rotation as well. You can find him at BayAreaLoanSource.com or on Facebook or on YouTube or on LinkedIn, BayAreaLoanSource.com. Now, Tony, investors, um, most of us grew up with the thought that, yeah, we know that there's some investors in real estate. We see the TV shows, but we think about home is where the heart is. Home is where you live. Um, what are investors doing at this point in time? Oh, they're chomping into bit. Yeah, they are. They are hoping this is going to be another market where um, they see a dip and they can take advantage of it. In fact, a lot of what we're seeing with the um, our seasoned investors. They're looking at taking cash out. They're they're looking to step up on their property, similar to what somebody would do. They would just they would move up from a two bedroom to a three bedroom. That's what that investors are doing. So they're chomping at the bit. They're taking money out on equity lines, getting poised to jump on any properties that make sense. That also leaves more inventory open for other investors to join the market. So this is a very healthy part of what we're seeing when we see these kind of cyclical movements in home prices. Well, have a good Thanksgiving. Enjoy the turkey and know that people can listen to Tony Mendez host the Real Estate Report Wednesdays 2 to 3 here on KDO Debbie. You can also find him online at BayAreaLoanSource.com. That's a, a pretty easily remembered website, BayAreaLoanSource.com. Thanks, Tony. Have a good day. Moving on. Um, let's take a look at what's happening in the stock market. Mixed reaction to mixed earnings news. Okay. Growth concerns connected to China's COVID-related lockdowns. Can you believe it? Just how far we are in this issue and we still have it. Um, From what I'm hearing, and I've never been to China, but I hear our vaccinations are way better in the West than China's. And their government's being stubborn, not ordering from Pfizer or Moderna. (laughs) But again, I know nothing about contagious disease except for what I see on TV. And trust me, I'm not going to be a talking mouth like everyone else and tell you how to live your life. 
but it does hurt Wall Street's confidence. There's some lagging mega cap stocks weighing on index performance today as well. So those are the top stories of the day. That's how we're playing out. Uh, there's been a good bit of earnings news since yesterday's close. Best Buy is up 8.6% saying, look, we're going to sell a lot of electronics this year. They kind of reaffirm they're doing okay. Dollar Tree's down 2.2% on a weaker than expected report. Agilent Technologies, and don't forget Dollar Tree is now called a buck seven because inflation has been averaging 7% for a while, right? Agilent Technologies up, Medtronics is down. So again, do you see the kind of a yo-yo in some of these uh how it's playing out with returns. Tesla's up 1.5%. Amazon is up six tenths of a percent. Meta Platforms is up one half a percent. NVIDIA is up one half a percent. Alphabet is up four tenths of a percent. Um, not a lot of news responsible for relative strength in those stocks. Just, I guess you could say that they're mostly consumer stocks, retail stocks. Everyone knows them. Moving on. Let's take a look at what else we can find out there as far as top stories go. Um, don't be shy, first and foremost. It's a holiday week. And one of the things I do around the holidays is because I'm not working aggressively with my company, EP Wealth, right now. We just did a seminar. So we're, we're regrouping and planning a seminar for February. So while I have a little bit of time off, I'm doing a little bit of focus on my own personal finances. Um just making sure I've got everything done and in order for the end of the year. We'll talk about that in the coming days on this show. Collapsed crypto firm FTX has about $1.2 billion in cash, but still owes at least $3.1 billion. Um, I think most of us are still expecting Bitcoin to go down to about the 13,000 level, which is where it was when it took off to 64,000. So the 64,000 dollar question is how low can it go? Limbo low. I'm going to make a lot of people happy when I say this. A lot of people sad. Dr. Fauci is going to give his final COVID briefing as top White House health official. Coming up. Kind of fun, right? How we got to know him in a weird way. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing and more. Find me online at robblackshow.com. You are listening to the Rob Black Show podcast. For more information on EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. A lot going on this year, right? With Russia and Ukraine and how that it has affected policies around the world. Washington is saying no to no nukes in California. The United States government's going to spend $1 billion to keep active a California nuclear power plant. The Biden administration announced it is giving $1.1 billion to Pacific Gas and Electric, the off beleaguered energy company, um, which powers much of California to keep the lights on in the Golden State's last remaining nuclear power plant. plant. Um, you guys got into lots of trouble with, I don't say we got into a lot of trouble, but there's been three power plants that have really kind of spoiled nuclear, to say the least. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima. California's immediate crisis outweighs fears of hypothetical nuclear meltdowns. In other words, when wildfires rage through backyards on a semi-annual basis, the desire to ditch fossil fuels by any means necessary becomes a lot more irresistible. Power plant that we're talking about supplies about 8% of all electricity in California. So I guess if you were doing the math, if you had another 12 power plants, we would have cleaner, much cleaner energy, except for When nuclear goes bad, it goes real bad, right? Those three-headed frogs, they're so cute. Where do you store the stuff? There was a a Twilight Zone episode that was fantastic, and it was this inventor created this place where we could put trash and it goes away. And it doesn't go to the landfill. It just leaves planet Earth. We don't know where it goes. And at the end, at the very, very end... Uh, you see that it goes to a planet that has other humans on it, and they're all dying because we've sent all our trash to them. Yay! Go America! Um, 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. U.S. ad spending down about 5% for the month of September compared to the same time last year, continuing a four-month decline, despite the likely harbinger of more economic pain to come. 
you're still seeing companies try to get sponsorships out there. The World Cup has a very problematic advertising relationship this year, in large part because the country that's hosting the World Cup has some pretty horrific um, standards when it comes to dealing with lesbians and gays and homosexuals and bisexual, queer. It has a pretty horrible um, track record of how it handles women. And some of the advertisers like Anheuser-Busch was excited to sell beer to soccer rabid fans only to find out two days before the event, no beer allowed. Because the people of Cater, Cutter, whatever you want to say, they don't want it. 30 Major League Baseball teams generated $1.2 billion in sponsorship revenue lists last year. That's a, that seems a little small, doesn't it? 30 Major League Baseball teams generated $1.2 billion in sponsorships. And you see companies like Apple regularly earn multiple billions in a 90-day period. You're like, wow, that's how big Apple is compared to Major League Baseball. The NBA loosened its sponsorship rules, and now teams can sell ad space on the front of jerseys and basketball hoops and can have 10 international sponsors up from the previous three. Sponsored the World Cup and Cater probably would prefer a little less transparency, a litany of human rights controversies, not enough to keep most advertisers out of the event. I was watching some of the games and um, I'm like, what is Luco's aid? It's spelled L-U-C-O-Z-A-D-E. Oh, it's a British soda company and they sponsor England's soccer team. They did remove their logos from the team's water bottles for the duration of the tournament. And you go, whoa. It's not the easiest time to be tied towards something that's not well loved. And the industry in itself is in decline in the last four months. 800 516 1220 to get your calls on the air. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. One thing that we should talk about on occasion is uh, China technology. And as an investor, I stay out. I was really, really, really close to buying Alibaba one day because it's the Amazon of China. And in the end, I just I don't think I get voices in my head because I don't want to say that on record. But in the end, I I always kind of go, nope, spurts of optimism, not worth knowing what's going on in the Chinese government. Xi Jinping's government is finally easing up on the COVID zero playbook and U.S.-China relations took a small but symbolic step toward reapproachment when Xi and American leader Joe Biden met in Bali. But will that sentiment last? Because Xi has something called, quote, common prosperity, end quote, agenda. The cornerstone of the campaign is to curb the influence of powerful tech firms and force them to share the wealth. Um. So I don't know if I, I want to invest in that because one of the things I do say about investing in S&P 500, and like you're like, Rob, you're a loser. The S&P 500 is down 20% this year. I don't think so. I think the S&P 500 is giving you a 20% off because last year we hit 70 all-time highs and that was too much. And I don't look at the S&P 500 as roller coaster stocks of earnings. What I look at it as is much more realistically, it's capitalism. So I'm comparing capitalism in the United States to capitalism of China, where it's, what did I use? Common prosperity, where everyone gets a piece of the pie. And again, I'm not going to get into conversations about communist, socialist, and the rich America, the haves, the have-nots. I know all those things exist. Intel's turnaround plan stuttered. As executive Randir Thakur stepped down from his position, heading up the company's push into contract chip manufacturing. Interesting. The story out of Colorado Springs is kind of inspiring the way the gunman got brought down. Just um, everyone running in one direction, one man running back at, at the shooter. What would you do? Um, I don't know. I'm not going to bring it up at the Thanksgiving dinner table because uh, let's just say I don't want to get into a fight with people. <laughs> I'm learning. Surprisingly, I'm learning. 800 516 1220 to get your calls in the air. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. Dell post strong earnings as supply chain issues eased. Zoom video stock slides on guidance miss. Revenue continues to slow. We can hit that one a little bit more. 
Um, Zoom obviously had a huge play with pandemic and people working from home. It's down 8% today. It's 52 week high. Hmm, it's not coming up for me. In the last 12 months, it's down 64%. That's all I really need to say, right? I kind of want to look at the 52 week high though. Ooh, there it is. 211, 218 this time a year ago. Now it's down to $73. Down 60% year to date, down 64% in the last 12 months. Um, would I buy that stock now? That's a good question. And the answer is no. I think Zoom is going to be acquired by someone like a Microsoft or a Google. Um, and I don't buy for takeouts. Because listen to how I play this game in my head. I'm already saying, I think Zoom gets taken out. And if Microsoft takes them out or Google takes them out, that's a very good thing. Um, they're basically getting rid of a competitor. But did you hear the word that I said that I, I really despise is if. If they get acquired. So there's a phrase that, that I learned in my childhood that goes like this. If if and butts were candy and nuts, oh, what a party we'd have. Okay, I'm not buying Zoom. When it makes sense in front of me, sure. When I look at the financials and the earnings, I, I would be all in. Uh, but there's intensifying competition from Microsoft, from Cisco, Google. Zoom projects January quarter revenue of $1.09 billion. Um, that's a lot of money. And I'm not knocking them. They finished the quarter with 209,000 enterprise customers, up 14% from a year ago. Because I live off a long and windy country road, I use Zoom for my home phone, which kind of stinks. Um, because the cell phone's coverage is kind of spotty. But the Zoom is right on. So when you do get in touch with me, and we are talking on a Zoom phone call, it's pretty, pretty good. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. <laughs> Um, money investing and more. I did not have a moment of nostalgia when I found out the Power Rangers star Jason David Frank's autopsy is complete. Um, yet another one of those, he was a little bit on the young side. Um, one of the things we talk about on this show is kind of macabre. We're all going to die. And some of us die much sooner than we should. And the people who are hurt are the people that need your income. Those are the people who get life insurance. If someone needs your income, if you were to die unexpectedly by a car crash, by a meteor falling on you, is your family going to suffer? If so, you need to buy term life insurance, not whole life, not variable life. Those are, are very expensive products that are not appropriate for most people. Special variable. Screw that. Um, term is the cheapest, and it'll cover you for the period of time that your family needs your income. Probably about when you turn 60. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Visit the Rob Black Show online at robblackshow.com. Listen to archive podcasts, market updates, and information from EP Wealth Certified Financial Planners online at robblackshow.com. I'm Rob Black talking about money investing and more. An RMD deadline is approaching. This is what I do not like about investing. About getting older is you got to do it right. If you're 72 or older, you have to take your minimum required distribution now to avoid a big penalty or a double dip next year. There's still time to beat the RMD deadline and withdraw your required minimum distribution from your traditional IRA, 401k, or other retirement account except a Roth IRA for 2022, but you better hurry. The due date for taking the RMD is December 31. And as we start to sit down and feast with Thanksgiving, December 31 is coming up pretty quickly. Are you doing a good enough job with your money that you feel you don't need help? 
good for you. Um, I find that as I hit wealth and got wealthier, and I'll say once I hit 1 million, then 2 million, I became more concerned about doing it right. And knowing that if I make a 2% mistake, it's, it's costly. Thanksgiving 2022, Americans plan to spend less on food, alcohol, amid inflation layoffs. Nervous shoppers are saying they'll buy less or switch to cheaper brands. As inflation remains high and more Americans worry about whether they'll be able to hold on to their jobs. And yet we're still seeing people quit jobs. Um, it's always been one of the issues with immigration with me is I'm okay with immigration. I, I think America thrives on it because we bring people to our country that are willing to do the jobs that we don't want to do in a very unattractive way. I'm saying that <clears throat> low paying jobs, 70% of Americans say they intend to purchase less meat, seafood, or canned goods, use a cheaper brand or both. Inflation is sort of a fancy term for people having to pay more for the same amount of stuff. And we're seeing the high cost of people cutting back. Seven in 10 Americans say they will buy a smaller amount or look for a cheaper choice when shopping for desserts and treats. 68% intend to make the same changes when picking up frozen foods. 65% will try to save money when purchasing fresh produce. For me, it's all about spoilage. I, I hound my family like that banana's black. Why didn't anyone eat it? B A N A N A S bananas. Speaking of Thanksgiving and eating, Americans are embracing travel. But what about remote workers and how do they play into this? Airlines started packing their planes with Thanksgiving holiday travelers over the weekend far earlier than normal. People are bracing for pandemic passenger numbers. Pre-pandemic passenger numbers is the right way of saying that. Hybrid workers who can pop open their laptops anywhere have made traveling a little bit easier and a little bit longer. More than four and a half million Americans are expected to fly from Wednesday through Sunday, an 8% increase over last year and just 2% shy of 2019 numbers. Getting back to kind of normal. Speaking of getting back to kind of normal, James Cameron, I was reading an interview with him he's talking about the avatar way of the water. And he says, there's supposed to be five of them, but if Americans don't come back to the movie theaters, like we want them to, there's only going to be maybe three. Um, and he's worried. And he used a funny quote. He said, a lot of Americans don't give a damn about going to movies anymore because of all the streaming services out there. And I'm like, Ooh, they don't give a damn. He, he kind of cursed sweet. Um, but I think he's also kind of right. There was a point in time when you're under 25 where you'll see every movie. You'll go to a movie every weekend. And then as you get older, you're like, nah, yeah. And the streaming services, okay, yeah, okay. And the TVs, the 4K TVs at home are sweet. Last week, the TSA said they were expecting to screen up to 2.5 million passengers on Wednesday and possibly more than that number on the coming Sunday when people come home. All airlines should benefit from holiday strength, especially as we expect Americans to again resume their travel to international destinations this holiday. Family member of mine, she's in Italy. Like, yep, people are embracing travel during Thanksgiving. So this week with Thanksgiving, right? What else do we have to think about? We get through Thanksgiving, we're a little bloated, and we go to bed early, and we wake up and we go shopping. Black Friday. Cyber Monday is overtaken Black Friday as far as sales go, but Black Friday can offer investors clues about how much uh, consumers have left in the tank as far as spending goes. Black Friday is arriving in an interesting time where we know a recession's out there. I think there are tech recessions already happening. The number of job openings and job applicants is going crazy. Job applicants to job openings, and it's part of the Fed Reserve. They really like what's called the job opening report, the JOLTS report. And what we're now starting to see is some corporations saying, you know what? We didn't get that job filled, but we don't want it filled anymore because we're looking at a recession in 2023. The October retail sales number released last week 
saw sales of goods and services increase by 1.3%. However, some of the report's details were less sanguine. Department store sales, sporting goods, apparel, consumer electronics were all notably weak, especially after you factored in inflation in the prices of those items. And you took that away. You're like, ooh, that's not looking good. <clears throat> so how far will discounting go this year? The lingering effects of the pandemic, meaning big box retailers have been stuck with unsold inventory with consumer electronics to home furnishings. One minute. I think that going into a perceived downturn for the economy, who knows whether it's going to occur or not, but the perception is generally that it's going to happen. If you're going into that and you're long inventory, what you're going to do is try to get rid of that stuff as best you can with discounting. Many consumers are just numb to Black Friday sales because they've been seeing it for the past six weeks. Totally agree. We've been getting like sale this week, sale this week, sale this week. And I'm like, okay, I've nibbled here, I nibbled there, I've nibbled here. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'll be doing more events in 2023. One of the things that EP Wealth has allowed me to do is post my long form interview with Adam Phillips. It's at my YouTube channel right now, Rob Black Show. It's the fourth quarter update. It's worth taking a look at. It's 50 minutes of really talking stocks and economy. Check it out at Rob Black Show on YouTube. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth.